Now, I'm sorry, though, to have to begin by disagreeing with His Grace. Um, if you're going to be a serious grown-up person and appear to defend the Catholic Church in public in front of an educated and literate audience, you simply have to start by making a great number of heartfelt apologies and requests for contrition and forgiveness. His Holiness on that occasion, it was March the 12th, 2000, if you wish to look it up, begged forgiveness for, among some other things, the Crusades, the Inquisition, the persecution of the Jewish people, injustice towards women, that's half the human race right there, <laughs> and the forced conversion of indigenous peoples, especially in South America. And that followed a whole series of preceding apologies, or apologies, I would say, of a kind, made by the late Pope John Paul, who, it troubles me not at all to say, was a very impressive and serious human being. Um, it followed no less than 94, 94 count them, uh, public recognitions on his part of appalling crime and error and cruelty and stupidity and offenses to the free intelligence, ranging from, I shall be summary, like Bishop Marini, the African slave trade apologized for in 1995, uh, the admission that Galileo was right <laughs> about the relationship between the sun and the earth and other orbs, which came in 1992, one might add, no, I won't say, it's too easy to say better late than never, here, I said it. <laughs> to violence and torture, legalized torture. Torture was legalized and institutionalized by the Roman pontiff during the Counter-Reformation. That came in 1995. Um, and for silence during Hitler's final solution, or Shoah, as well as in 1999 coming in just under the Millennium Jubilee wire, an apology for the burning alive in the main square of Prague of the great Czech Protestant Jan Hus. But remember, this is from a church that on the whole cannot err. We still await a more direct admission. For example, I would give some suggestions of my own while we're at it. I would like them to take back the Concordat made with Adolf Hitler, the first treaty he ever signed, giving the church a monopoly over education in Germany in exchange for the dis dissolution of the Catholic Center Party to give the Nazi Party a clear run. I'd have apologized for the Lateran Pact with Mussolini, myself, also the first treaty ever signed by that fascist dictator. I would also think I'd want to reconsider the fact that Father Tizo, head of the Nazi puppet state in Slovakia, was a priest in holy orders. That the Croatian fascist puppet state, the Ustasha state of Ante Pavlic, was also operating under full clerical protection and disguise, as was the regime of General Franco and the dictator Antonio Salazar. And I'd also want, I really think I would beg forgiveness for this, I don't think the German church should have asked Hitler's birthday to be celebrated from the pulpit every year until he died. These are very serious matters, and they're not to be laughed off by references to the occasional work of Catholic charities. But I draw your attention not just to the apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but to the evasive and euphemistic form that they take. Uh, Joseph Ratzinger, the current pope, considered by some, by Catholics, to be the vicar of Christ on earth, says of Indians, of the Indians who were massacred in the course of conversion in Brazil, after the apology had been made to them, he said, nonetheless, it must be remembered that before we came to convert them, they were silently awaiting the arrival of the church. I don't think that's a very genuine kind of apology to you. In his comment, one of the few he's made on the institutionalization of rape and torture and maltreatment of children in Catholic institutions, he said, it's a very severe crisis which, which involves us, he said, in the following, in the need for applying to these victims the most loving pastoral care. Well, I'm sorry. They've already had that. <laughs> and to say that this is the responsibility laid upon you by the, the horrific admission that you've already had to make is not accepting responsibility in any adult sense. I think that there will be an apology for what happened in Rwanda the most Catholic country in Africa, one of the most Catholic countries in the world, um, where priests and nuns and bishops are on trial for inciting from their pulpits and on the churches, radio stations and newspapers the massacre of their brothers and sisters. Uh, and the papacy was silent on this appalling occasion. And everyone in Rwanda knows it. And there hasn't yet been a properly written apology for that disgrace. 
Staying in Africa, I think it will one day be admitted with shame that it might have been in error to say that AIDS is bad as a disease, very bad, but not quite as bad as condoms are bad, or not as immoral in the same way. I say it, I say it in the presence of His Grace, and I say it to His face, the preachings of His Church are responsible for the death and suffering and misery of millions of his brother and sister Africans. And he should apologize for it. He should show some, some shame. Fourth, for condemning my friend Stephen, Stephen Fry for his nature, for saying, for saying you couldn't be a member of our church, you're born in sin. There's a revolting piece of casuistry that's sometimes offered on this point. Yeah, we hate the sin only. We, we love the sinner. Stephen is, I'm sorry to say, not quite like other girls. It's his nature. <laughs> Actually, he is like other girls in that, in that he's, when I last checked, absolutely boy mad. Um, he's not being condemned for what he does. He's being condemned for what he is. You're a child made in the image of God. Oh, no, you're not. You're a faggot. And you can't join your church and you can't go to heaven. This is disgraceful, it's inhuman, it's obscene, and it comes from a clutch of hysterical, sinister virgins who've already betrayed their charge in the children of their own...